Hey everyone, thanks for tuning in for another video. Today we're going to be talking about the CZ457 Pro Varmint. Hi everybody, so we have the CZ457 Pro Varmint here. Um, for anybody who is new, CZ is a very reputable um, gun manufacturing company from Czech Republic. They make awesome uh, firearms, some shotguns, handguns, rifles, and uh, this so happens to be kind of their their staple in the 22 uh, lineup. So 457 is pretty popular. Um, they used to have a 455, and then they've come out with the 457, which is this one here. Made a key updates, a couple key updates that we're going to talk about shortly, but this one is just one of many, many models that they have, and um, I'll talk about why I picked this model over the other ones, but there's, this is just one of many other models, and um, this is the Pro Varmint here in 22LR. Uh, we'll just make sure that the firearm is safe there. Of course, there's no rounds in there. Um, but this is my current setup here. Retail is at about $699, and I actually got it for about $650 shipped to the, uh, to the FFL. Um, and it comes bone stock. Um, there's no ready to hunt package. There's no nothing that comes with it. It's all bone stock. So it comes with just the, the rifle and um, has a little a lock nut, a little locking nut here um, so that it doesn't expose the threads. And that's pretty much it. So you get the, the, the barrel, the stock, uh, trigger, bolt, and a little locking nut here. So the key thing that sticks out about this model is the fit and finish. Um, it comes with a 16 inch bore barrel uh, and a one and 16 inch twist. Uh, and it has this um, black wooden stock that kind of has a textured uh, finish on it. And I wanted to get this one particularly because it's wood. Um, I'm not a very big fan of uh, plastic. Uh, I'm not a very big fan of those. When it gets cold outside, those things get really cold and you're holding in hand. I love this because it just, and no matter if it's hot outside, cold outside, the wood um, stays very true. It doesn't, um, you know, you don't have that weird grippiness or, or slippery feeling, uh, and it doesn't get cold to the touch of the hands. So um, I really like the wood finish here. It has a really nice textured finish, and I've had it for many, many years, and the finish is still very, very durable on it. Um, it's actually a Boyd stock, uh, if you're curious on who made this particular stock. Um, the big difference between the 455 and the 457 is two key areas. Uh, really, the uh, the bolt and how much it throws back. Um, this here throws 60 at a 60 degree angle, whereas the 455 throws it at a 90 degree angle. So it, it really comes really far up and that kind of causes some issues, um, maybe rubbing into the optics, maybe just kind of clearing rails. Um, so the 457 is a big upgrade because they've actually thrown it at 60 degrees instead of 90 degrees. Another key part is the push safety. Um, the 457 offers this thumb push safety. Uh, the 455 does not. Um, so it has a little bit different, and um, obviously they did this to kind of accommodate for the American market. It does come with a dove style type uh, mounting rail on the top. So if you're looking to mount your Picatinny uh, type rings to it, it won't work. So you're, you're kind of limited. Uh, that's one of the bad things about it is that you're limited to it. So that's why you would have to upgrade to a Picatinny rail. Um, but it does come with the factory dove style, tile, uh, dove style type uh, mounting rail here so if you can find rings that have that kind of amount um, you can use it there's not a lot of options out there so that's one of the cons about this but that's why I have the area 419 rail here um, if you're not familiar with area 419 um, they make a lot of different great products but this is a rail that I purchased from them and they have different MOAs this happens to be 15 MOA uh, they have a 30 and a 60 I believe too as well but I have the one in a 15 MOA uh, with just the normal rings here, and then I have it paired up with the Vortex Viper 4x16. Um, uh, up front here, I have a suppressor. This is a uh, rugged Mustang 22 suppressor, and this is actually full aluminum. Um, and the reason why I went full aluminum is because I wanted the rifle to balance very well, and I also didn't want to add weight to it. Um, this is a full aluminum uh, multi baffle type suppressor, and uh, I'll do another. I'll do a full video on the suppressor itself, but um, that's what I have it paired up with here. Um, the key thing about this is that it also comes threaded, 
So whether if you are planning a throw suppressor or not, it does have the option for you to mount uh, a suppressor onto it. Um, let's talk about some of the other things. Uh, obviously the most important is going to be uh, the accuracy. Um, this thing is like a tack driver. They use this a lot for competition and that should tell you something about the accuracy about uh, CZs and especially the 457s. Um, this is a really popular um, rifle platform for people to use in competition shooting. Um, you, you know, they have uh, even more expensive ones than this one itself. Uh, but this, uh, the platform itself overall is just phenomenal and, and super great and super reliable. Uh, and again, it's very accurate. Uh, that's why a lot of people like using it for competition shooting itself. Um, there's a lot of different parts you can also uh, change in and out, which I really love about this. The parts are pretty much infinite. There's so many different parts you can do. You can swap barrels, you could swap, um, you know, all types of different things. You can swap triggers, you could even swap little knobs here too as well. Um, so there's a lot of different things you can do with this. So you don't always have to rocket stock. Um, it's not as customizable as a 1022 though. Uh, so for the guys that are, that are a big 1022 fans, uh, that platform is just, there's a ton more available on a 1022, uh, but that's just because it's a more popular um, model. Um, but I, I genuinely uh, really, really like this. And I think if you're just wanting something that's ready to go out the box, where you don't have to tweak too much to get the accuracy that you really want, um, the 457 is a really, really good option, particularly the, um, this model here. Um, one thing that, a couple things I'm gonna talk about that I really also like is this little cheek riser here um, that's integrated with the stock. Uh, but it's just, for me, and, and this is, you know, it's gonna vary from shooter to shooter, but for me, I love, I love how natural this feels. So when I literally just go to, you know, if I'm looking at a target, I can just literally just, boom, I'm ready to go. Like, I don't even have to like find my scope. I don't have to adjust. It's just pretty much anytime I'm looking down sight, I'm, I know exactly where I need to go right here. So I can see exactly a clear picture in my, my scope. Um, so it's really, really nice. And this is just perfect for me, but I definitely would try it if everyone's a little different. I'm a bigger guy. I'm 6'1", 260 pounds, so, you know, I got a bigger head frame too as well. So um, that's also why I went with the Area 419 rail with the high rise so that, you know, again, I have a bigger face. So for me, I don't have to be like crouching down to find my cross here. I really like that I can just literally transition from looking at my target and then just focusing, you know, boom, line it up with my sight and I'm good to go. I don't have to find my tar um, find my, my cross here. Um, um, because the eye relief can be a little finicky, especially if you're shooting longer distance. Um, but the groupings on this is amazing. Uh, in the video right now, I'm shooting at about 30 yards, um, and that's typically where I like to shoot and sight in my rifles for small game. Uh, so I'm shooting at 30 yards, and you can just tell how, how accurate um, the, uh, the shots are. And what I'm shooting is not even match ammo. It's literally just uh, Federal 22 suppressor ammo. So... That is kind of my go-to ammo for small game. And that's typically what I like to shoot. So um, I'm not even shooting SKs. Um, I have shot SKs before. When I do shoot SKs, I get pretty much um, tack drivers all the time. But if I'm shooting like something like Federal 22, a little bit cheaper ammo, um, then I'm getting you know the group that I am in this video right here. One thing that I don't like about this, um, about this entire platform is the magazine, the clip only holds five here and it, it also it does come with polymer out of this one i know some of the other models like uh i believe the premium comes with a metal one my dad has a premium and it actually comes with the metal this these are polymer these are just plastic and they only hold five the reason why i talked about the weight earlier is because i'm going to talk about it now the way that this balances out in my hand look at that i mean it just it just balances there and this is actually how i hold my rifles and i'm when I'm out and about and I'm in the woods, I typically hold it like this. Um, sometimes I strap it, but most of the time I'm holding it underneath like this. And so it balances very well. And so if I were to use the banana clip from CZ, which is the extended mag, it'll stick out about probably like an inch, maybe an inch and a half. That's a problem for me because I don't like stuff getting caught. I don't like, you know, stuff getting in the way. And then if I have to hold it off because I have to compensate for the banana clip, now it's sagging the other way because the weight's not distributed evenly. So that's the reason why I also went with the aluminum uh, can is because it's very, very light and it doesn't really 
it doesn't really have an effect on to the total weight of it. So I'm not like balancing, you know, super heavy up front or in the back. It balances exactly where I want it to balance, right in the middle area right here, which is awesome. This is a little bit of a heavier 22. Um, it's pretty heavy. And I think that's something that can be either a pro or con to you. Um, out of the box, it comes heavy because it offers a bore barrel. But I like shooting heavier firearms. I like, especially when I'm shooting longer distance, I prefer to have a heavier one, a heavier firearm, because I can, you know, once I get it locked in, I am just holding it dead still versus if I'm, if it's a really light, you know, rifle, then I'm kind of bouncing around a little bit. Um, so I prefer actually a, a heavy option like this one here. Um, and gosh, this thing is so smooth. Um, I've had this, this setup for about four years now. This is going to be, I believe, my... Uh, my fourth or fifth season and this thing I mean I just cleaned it up but this thing is just the action of these are just so smooth um, and I just love the way it shoots and it's a true reliable 22 a great platform if anybody's looking to get into the 457s one other dip con that I'm going to talk about is this thing right here this is more for craftsmanship I believe maybe not design this little swivel here that holds a um, uh, a strap gosh I can't even think of it right now I'm having a brain fart but the thing that holds the uh, strap here um, a gun a sling sorry I, I was having a brain fart right there for a second uh, need some coffee uh, this here is, is actually loose and this swivels right now it didn't come like that and I think this is going bad right now and it is um, it's it's loose um, it's not I can't pull it out but for some reason it's turning this one doesn't turn, this one is nice and, and, and locked in. And the bottom one is nice and locked into as well. Um, I do have a brother-in-law that has uh, a four, I believe it's a four, five, five. Don't get me wrong, it could be four, five, seven. But I know he has a CZ, um, the Varmint series, and his um, this swivel thing actually came loose in the stock and broke off and his rifle dropped. Um, so that's something that I gotta be very careful of. Um, just gotta pay close attention to that. I think it's more of like a craftsmanship Maybe not really a design uh, flaw, but I think it was like a poor, poorly made one, I guess. Maybe just, it just you know, maybe the glue wasn't good or something, the threading, I don't know. Um, but um, fingers crossed that I don't drop my rifle because this is an expensive setup itself. Um, but other than that, those are the only two gripes that I have about it, is the magazine only having five, and then um, probably the craftsmanship in this little silver here. So something to pay attention to. But overall, this is a great firearm, a great option. It is dead quiet. I know 22s are quiet to begin with already, but I really like it, especially if I am you know, have multiple small game uh, in one area. Um, I can really stay and pick them apart without having to move and without having to make any adjustments. I can literally just stay in one spot and um, you know, the small game uh, won't even hear anything. So I really, really like this setup. The scope um, I, that I had originally when I when I first started hunting with this, I have upgraded a couple of times. So this is not you know what I had from day one. I've actually added and purchased things as I went. So you know when I first started hunting with this firearm, I only had just the um, I only bought the scope, which was a, uh, a crossfire from Vortex, uh, the rimfire version, and then I had just the basic dovetail um, rings. And it worked, it did a good job, got multiple scores on it, but I knew I wanted to push the rifle a little bit more because I, I, I know that I could. The rifle gave me the ability to do that, but the optics was, wasn't there. Um, it was, I, I you know, just couldn't get that, you know, nice, you know, um, eye, eye relief every single time. So I, you know, upgraded uh, all the sights and upgraded the 419 rail to that. And here I am with the Vortex Viper 4x16, which I really love. Um, can definitely get shots uh, to 100 yards or more pretty accurately um, with it too as well. So this is definitely uh, my go-to 22 setup. This is the only 22 that I own currently. Um, my, I do have, I have shot a lot of other 22s in the lineups because um, I know my dad's also a big CZ457 fan. Um, but this is just one uh, of many models that they have. And I know that um, all the models that I've shot or I know of um, are really, really good. And they are very, very accurate out of the box too as well. That's what you get with CZ. Um, but overall, like I said, it is a great firearm. I love the fit and finish of it. Uh, this is going to be, um, you know, something that I'm going to continue to, you know, probably give updates on about this firearm. Again, this is like my fifth season, I believe, hunting with it. And um, I have had really not much issues just besides 
this little craftsmanship thing here like I talked about. Um, if there's any questions you guys have about the particular firearm itself, uh, let me know. Uh, like I said, this is, um, you know, I, I really love the firearm itself. It is really, really sweet, really accurate. Um, you can look in the pictures, you know, in the videos to itself to just kind of see what kind of groupings I'm getting. And uh, that's shooting really from a cold barrel too as well. So I uh, hope you guys enjoy the video. Hope you guys like this. If you guys have any questions about anything that's on this, uh, on the setup here, drop a comment below. I'd love to chat with you. Um, I decided to make this video because when I first was looking into buying a CZ457, uh, this particular model, um, there was only one guy on YouTube that had a video on it. So kudos to that guy for making a video because that actually sold me on it. I just loved the way it looked. It was super accurate. And I knew it was something that I wanted to have because it was just so customizable from a standpoint of if I were to just add things, I could customize the crap out of it. So definitely kudos to him. Thank you for making that video because this. And so I'm just happy to make the video for anyone else who's thinking about getting in this rifle too. If you haven't done yet or if you haven't shot it yet, shoot one. If you can't shoot one, just buy one and thank me later. Uh, <laughs> definitely a great rifle. Um, but without further ado, guys, thank you so much for watching. And uh, we'll see you guys on the next video. Thank you.